Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be talking about the removal of Corvus timeout method. And first thing I will note that the title and the way they're phrasing it is absolutely incorrect because that is not removing the Corvus timeout method. It is changing the way the game works and it will, much, it will have much broader impact than just Corvus timeout. So this video is going to be structured in effectively three main points and then kind of some final notes, final conclusions. So the first point is about how exactly will it work and that the way Kabam is phrasing it right now and the way they are talking about it is the perfect way to get as many people pissed off as possible because they're not giving us details. They're being a bit dubious about it, trying to pin the tail on the donkey named Corvus without acknowledging that this will also affect Hercules, who is fast becoming one of the more dominant AQ champions as well. It will affect Heimdall's energy, it can affect Hella, it will most likely affect I-Hulk as well, and it can affect many different champions and pl unsuspecting players who don't even try to time out or do, do it deliberately, because if you use somebody like Captain America Infinity War and, you know, your perfect parries, you have messed up, you have died, you can give Cap Infinity War one level one revive that gives him 350 HP and you'll be fine. You can use Cap Infinity War as long as you don't miss a parry. He's not going to take any damage and it doesn't matter that he is at like 1% HP. But should you happen to time out with him, then he's going to randomly just get KO'd. Even if you're not doing the timeout method. If you just time out with low enough HP, which is the first big issue of this. How exactly this is going to work? we don't know because what they are saying is that map 8 will not allow any champion to survive timeout at a very low health what does that mean do they mean literally one hp in which case this change is pretty much irrelevant because you can bring in Hor corvus with liquid courage on double edge in and he's going to be healing every time a bit so long as you time out before um you know, your double edge expires, you will have more than one HP. But if you do anything else, then it creates problems for a ton of other champions. Uh, like I mentioned, mentioned Immortal Hulk or Captain Infinity War or any random champion where you just have low HP. So this is the first crucial part. We need to know exactly what is going to be the threshold and why. Can't do without it. A quick side note to mention, if you think that this is affecting only map 8, then they specifically say rest of the maps will follow that we will be changing map seven and below in future as well so keep that in mind so that is the first point we 100 percent without a doubt need to know exactly how it's going to work we can't have this vague bullshit of very low health and whatever else moving on to most important points as i said now that those ad with the addition of the boss lane killer crossfight abilities, we are giving alliances the tools necessary to deal with the challenge of lanes, regardless of the champion you're using. Now, here's the first problem. Are those tools really given? We don't know. They are pretending that the job is done when none of it has been tested. You know what I mean? They are saying that they are giving us all the tools needed. The tools might not be nearly good enough. Not to mention, it is not likely addressing most of the reasons why people do time out with the Corvus to begin with, which is the essential the essential point of this video. We need to talk why people choose this timeout method with Corvus when it is boring. Nobody wants to do it. I don't. I typically, most of the time, genuinely just rather get myself KO'd and revive uh, if I ha if it comes down to it, because I really, really don't like that whole timing out thing. And whoever does it, does not do it because they love doing it or think that they think that is the best thing to do. They do it because they have to. And why is that? Well, first of all, we need to talk about the map design in general and the fact that the nodes are extremely demanding in terms of what counters you use. And since you're covering several different sections and several different lanes and the defenders are becoming more and more complex, 
you just need to be able to counter more and more specific things. So if you're not using Corvus and if you're not timing out, chances are that there are maybe two, three, four good counters for those nodes, for those fights, for those lanes. And you might not have them or you might not be able to bring in all of them if you also want to fight the boss or you might not bring, be able to bring in all of them if you also need a synergy or something else because there's only three champion slots in Alliance Quest. What I'm trying to get at is that Alliance Quest, especially at map 7 and presumably map 8 level, is very complex, very intricate. And people feel that that is the better option rather than trying to risk an experiment. Because there is a lot that needs to be taken in consideration in between epic modifiers, in between global buffs, in between everything else. You need to cover all of that. And it's occasionally borderline impossible or at the very least very, very tricky. And it would require quite a lot of playtesting, but it's not free. It costs resources, which is the next big point. The resources here, uh, Alliance Quest potion price in itself has not changed in like two years. Glory is becoming effectively more and more valuable with every single Glory Store update. If three years ago, 1000 Glory would maybe give us. I don't know, 2,000 something fragments of tier 2 alpha. Right now, 1,000 glory will get us 1.5 tier 2 alpha. So the value of glory for many of these resources have basically been increased tenfold. The same amount of glory three years ago got us 10% of the resources that it can get now. Why? Because of the glory store updates. In order to keep up with the meta, with current things in the game, they have to update these glory stores, which is something that they have to do. But they have absolutely refused to update Alliance Quest potions and Alliance Quest potion price. They even came out with better potions, more effective potions, but those are only available for units. The ones you can buy with glory are still 260 glory a pop, level 3 potions that heal you up for 6,000, which is nowhere near enough when you use like a rank 3 6-star champion. You need to use like 8 of them to heal one champion up, or 7 or whatever, and they're just so expensive because their price has not been changed or amended at all for any reason. And because healing up champions is so hard, so tricky, and so risky because you risk running out of items as well, people ask risk of that and people can't afford that so it is a necessity for a ton of people just from the baseline game economies economy because otherwise they will not be able to use glory for anything else which is going to stand their progression which is going to make them think why am i even playing this map for instance or which is going to force them to spending units and spending money in order to get the potions for alliance quest ultimately Ban needs to realize that Corvus timeout method isn't really the problem. Is that not, it's not the underlying cause of the issue. The cause of the issue is shit game economy and shit map design, which is making people do that. And maybe they will sort out some of those problems with map 8 map design, make the nodes more open, albeit I doubt it. At the very least, not from what I have seen with the bosses and mini bosses. And maybe, maybe there will be like more options per lanes. But that still doesn't address the game economy part. When removing this is just gonna either force people to step down or not at the very least progress to map 8 but remain at map 7. Or, to, or it will force people to spend money. Because of faults in game economy. So this is a very big problem. I don't think Kabam completely comprehends that. What they should do, what they should do, is encourage people not to use Corus by providing better options that fit the nodes better. And I'm going to get into it at the end is my final conclusion. But if we're comparing this as a solution, if we can use a decently fitting metaphor, then this would be like if you're living in a relatively impoverished nation where you don't have enough food and the wages are shit and people live in poverty rather than trying to address the underlying issues and making sure that the country is wealthier it's run better that people can live better 
afford more and be happier. You're just telling people that they can't complain. And then you're going to pretend that everything's okay. So if you're imagining this is a country, imagine you're unemployed, you can't find job, everybody's poor around you, and obviously you're unhappy. And you say that you're unhappy and you, I don't know, go out, protest, write on the internet, make a video on it on YouTube. And then instead of government trying to make this entire economy better, or doing something about it, they just have this cut and dry solution of you're not allowed to complain about the government at all. This is some Cuba shit. This is some China shit. This isn't something that anybody of us would support in any other kind of area of life. This is just flat out dealing with the end result of a problem, not with the cause of it, which is going to piss off people. Moving on. Right now might be historically the worst time to drop this announcement. Because right now, the game is at its lowest point when it comes to performance and stability and reliability. Our parry and dexterity is messed up, and the game does crash significantly more than ever. And that game economy uh, and this entire system right now is set that whenever you do crash, it counts it as half a health penalty, whether you did it on purpose or not. And you're being penalized for things that are out of your control and that are direct fault of Kabam. And they have yet to do anything about it. Not to mention that even the fight recovery mechanic does not work in Alliance Quest. Because people would abuse it, and I'm sure some would. But who gives a shit if your product is unstable? At this point, I'm sure that as many people as would abuse it, more people would actually be protected by that fight recovery system because of how shit the game runs and because of all the crashing. Therefore, if they do plan to do this, they had to bide their time, fix the game, and then they can start talking about it. And even then, I would likely disagree with it. But at the very least, it would strip away this argument of Kabam is selling us and providing us with a fucked up game. They're selling us a car with four flat tires. They are selling us an umbrella that doesn't protect us from the rain and that doesn't have any covering. They're selling us something that fundamentally does not work the way it should right now. And that is a very big part of the reason why players are currently becoming less and less interested in the game and they are leaving it. Not the only issue, but it's a very big part of it. And rather than being accommodating with it, they take steps directly increasing the size of this problem. If game crashes are a big problem as is, then Corvus timeout method is the way a lot of people are currently being able to tolerate these game crashes in Alliance Quest because it doesn't actually cost them the potions because they can use Corvus and cheese through it or they can use Hercules, Hercules and cheese through it. Until the game's fixed, this is absolutely shit bugs come move to me. And yes, they have these Alliance Quest compensation packages, but realistically, I don't think they cover enough. Or at the very least, this is not the way the system should work. If they want to take this away, which again, I would likely still disagree with, I would like them to keep it in the game and just make Alliance Quest good enough for people not to have to do this, or people not to want to do this, for them to feel safe enough to afford the potion should they mess up and for them to feel safe enough to experiment to begin with so those are the three big points number one we have a huge problem because we don't know exactly how it is going to work and that kabam is mislabeling the problem it's not the removal of corvus timeout method it's changing the way alliance quest works fundamentally number two speaking of the tools any tools that they are currently talking about are untested unproven and players have no faith in them 
not to mention that even if tools are given, it still does not address game economy, the cost of Alliance Quest potions, the fact that Glory Star potions haven't been updated, and plenty of things of similar nature. And number three, we have currently historically bad time for game performance for your fighting mechanics of parry dexterity, which causes a lot of problems, not to mention the crashing. And as a final point, I think Bam is not fully understanding what Alliance Quest is to players. And I think they are mislabeling what it should be. See, Alliance Quest should in no means resemble top tier Everest type of content. It can't be that, it shouldn't be that. The more they make it look like Grandmaster's Gauntlet or Summer of Pain, the less people will be interested in it. And the more people will be annoyed by it. Because Alliance Quest is something we do first thing when we wake up, last thing when we go to sleep, something we do in our workplaces on the toilet, something we do pretending that we need to have an urgent call, something we do right next to our houses when we're out in town or when we're shopping. It is something that we need to do. It's a chore. It's a chore that forces us to play at the times when we otherwise wouldn't. It's a chore that we have to be on top of because we do need to clear the teammates, we do need to spend energy and all of that stuff. Alliance Quest is not a place where you test your skills. Alliance Quest is not something you play when you're at your best. Alliance Quest is something you do because you have to. And that's about it. So whilst I understand the need for Alliance Quest to be remade, to feel fresh, everything else about it. Fundamentally, Alliance Quest is not something that should be extremely scary, that should be testing. It should not be something that requires you to play at your best. And here is the biggest problem. The removal of this timeout method is going to make Alliance War a lot more stressful, a lot more scary for a lot more people, which in turn is going to turn them away from this game mode, maybe game in general, or at the very least will deter them from pushing higher. In my personal opinion, the way these nodes and boosts and buffs and everything else should be structured should be something similar in terms of have EQ, where you have path identities, and you have very significant benefits and bonuses, where if you know what you're doing, you can get through very quick and very fast, and if you don't, then you get penalized. It's not something that should be testing your reaction speed, how well you fight, and everything else. Alliance Quest, in my opinion, should be hard in preparation. Something that you need to give a thought of, what champions are going to use for what lanes, how they're going to work, and all that other stuff. But when it actually comes to playing through it, it should genuinely feel like have EQ, where you can get through the fights relatively quickly without them being incredibly hard, incredibly obnoxious. Because the cost of Alliance quest is really high. In terms of items, in terms of time commitment, and even in terms of alliance tickets and everything else. So to sum it up, I genuinely believe that Kabam is committing a critical oversight right now with all of these updates, not just Corvus, to what Alliance Quest is and what it should be. And then I definitely think that these all points have to be addressed before they can actually take it away even though if they address these points there should be no need to take it away which is exactly the way they should solve this problem they should make it so that people don't even want to use Corvus timeout method because it's tedious it's annoying it's time consuming but where they feel comfortable enough to bring in new champions experiment and you know just play through alliance quest without being super stressed about it. So right now we need Kabam to tell us exactly how it's going to work, where the HP threshold is going to be, and 
possibly which champions are going to be affected, so on and so forth. In regarding of the tools, well, we do need to test those. We can't take Kabam on the reward for the fact that, you know, there's going to be plenty of options or we have the tools. We don't know. That's not tested. Not to mention, even if we do, Alliance Quest potion, revive prices, and things around that are astronomically expensive. They need to reduce the cost of actually playing Alliance Quest if they want people to move away from these type of Koru strategies. And lastly, this is no time to do it. Fix your fucking game, and then you can start talking about things like this. Fix your goddamn motherfucking game so it doesn't crash, so parry works, so dexterity works. And yes, I know it's hard, and yes, I know it's complex, but guess what? It's what you're supposed to do, you muppets. But you can't pretend that everything's fine when the game's fucked. This is something that you could start looking at and thinking about and planning about when the game's working fine. This is not something you should even give a second thought whilst the game's fucked. So, that is what I think about this change to Corvus. And on a personal note, I don't even time out with Corvus. I have timed out, no, I have timed out a couple of times, but in general, it's not something I do. I don't even bring Corvus to Lion's Quest uh, too often. Especially during seasons when I don't run Liquid Courage Double Edge, but still. It just shows the tone deathness and, I don't know being out of touch with their players and not understanding what are the genuine issues or pretending not to understand, whichever. Right, that's about it. Long enough rant. Uh, let me know what you guys think. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information